everyone. Welcome. Well, welcome. And welcome, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. You didn't do the last few programs. I know. I'm still dealing with this, whatever it is. But we're so glad you joined us. And our guest today, David Wine. Yes. And he Man is... Man of God. ...from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Now, he lives here sometimes, but most of the time we try to get him and he's in Haiti. Well, he's a missionary there. I know. And we're going to talk about his orphanage. His uh, ministry is Black and White for Jesus Ministries. Amen. And Ken Hope is going to be singing for us today. And let's hope that Ken starts right. Ken? <laughs> Suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues To lift one cry Then from north to south And east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the Echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We'd hear Christ be its inmost melody and every human heart its native cry oh then one in a raptured hymn of parades will sing Christ be mad And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice, cause you're there too. And I won't be formed by feelings, I'll hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified with you. Cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life. If I join you, suffering, then I'll join you when you rise, and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing, my song will be the same, oh, Christ be magnified, let his praise arise, Christ
Thank Welcome you, back. Thank you, Oh, we appreciate it. Well, David Wine is with us today, and he's got a marvelous testimony. Yes, he does. And he said something to me just a few minutes ago <laughs> that he needs to tell all you that are parents. David? Good afternoon. It's so good hey. to be here. Um, so glad yes, you're with I was. Us. I was. I was uh, talking to them, and I. I just wanted to let the parents know out there that for me, when I was 12, where the school bus dropped me off, there was about three hours there in the day, and that's where I started my downward spiral. Um, I always tell parents a lot of people will call me since I have 65 children now and say, "Well, what kind of tips?" I say, "Well, the biggest tip I can give you is when your kids get out of school." have someone pick them up and watch them until you get home. Because mm. that downtime is the devil's time, yeah. often. Oh, how old were you? Junior high. I was 12. 12. I was in seventh grade uh, when I started smoking marijuana. And, and then by the time I was 15, I had uh, st uh, stuck a needle in my arm, which started over 20 year downward spiral um, until I ended up in jail. That's where I received, the sp I was reborn. But wow. you started out loving start, the Lord? Your yes, I started out growing up. My father was a tent evangelist. Yes, I know. And we, tra you know my father, and we traveled around, and um, I played drums and sang. My mother played the organ, just, you know, old time, old time Pentecost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was... And I, I believe because of those blessings that I gave when I was young, I think, I think that uh, really that my life had, was spared uh, mm -hmm. through that and a lot of people's prayers. Yeah. And especially all the mm -hmm. ladies that used to go to Carpenter's Home used to pray for me weekly with my mom in a service there. Wow. Really? Yes, sir. That's I didn't even speak to my mother for eight years. And when I went to jail, um, my life had just fallen apart. I was 137 pounds. I was dying of hepatitis C. And uh, when I went to jail, uh, I received Jesus in jail. I was reborn in jail. So and you weren't born again actually before? I was, got, but I, I backslid at yeah. a very early age of about 12. So you recommitted? I recommitted. Your heart yes, life. I did. And um, I cried for three days while I was in, in jail, just cleansing all those now, years. Who, who led you to the Lord? Actually, it started out because a nurse that was in the, in the infirmary, I OD'd on psych meds in jail. I was a true prodigal. I was actually washing clothes of the other people in jail, washing their clothes and sheets to get their drugs, their psych meds. And I was taking an, an, a bunch of psych meds to get high, and I OD'd on psych meds in jail. And they, they came in with a gurney. They pushed me down to the infirmary there. And a nurse, I'm, I, I, just one line, nobody had ever gotten through to me, but the Holy Spirit, I don't know if this woman was a Christian. I don't even know who she is or who she was now. She looked at me and she said, why did you do this? And for whatever reason, that reached into my heart. And I finally admitted, because I'm a drug addict and I need help. Did you say that to her? I said that. I remember saying that before they pumped my stomach. And you know, when we cry out for help, God is faithful. Amen. And he's just Amen. to forgive us. <laughs> and, um, you know, he didn't spare his own son for us. That's right. And That's right, um, at that moment, the Holy Spirit started working on me, working in my life. Wow. From now, that moment. Were you able to witness to people in jail? I actually, I, I served four months there in the jail. I finished my treatments. I was on treatments for my liver at that time. It was pegaferon. They didn't have this new drug. It was a very hard drug to do. But I stayed in jail, took care of that. The man that was supposed to testify against me in the case um, they could not find him. He didn't show up for court. So instead of 10 years, I only got two. So I actually went to TDC for a possession charge. And um, I, I was in the choir at TDC. I was a, a clerk for a while in one of the prisons um, and uh, a maintenance clerk. But God really, uh, I started laying the foundation in there with some good chaplains that were in the, uh -huh. in the prison. 
It really so for three me. days, you cried out to God? I cried. They thought I was crazy in the jail, but I was really, really getting my mind back. Did and he yet, talk to you? Did he give you a scripture? What happened, I, I went back there after they pumped my stomach the next day. I was looking in the Bible, and I looked at uh, Psalms 38, and um, you know where it talk, David talks about there's no soundness in my flesh, in my bones. Yeah. That, you know, I had covered in sores. My friends are afar off. Um, that psalm really is a grim psalm, but at the end it says, but I called out to the Lord, you know, and he heard me. Amen. I so, love that. Yes, ma'am. Now, did you call your mother? Me. After I figured out the phone number, I did not know my dad and mother's phone number when I was in there because it had been so long since I'd gotten a hold wow. of them. Huh. Yeah, but I finally reached them, and my dad, uh, <clears throat> kind of speeding it up here because we can go a long time on this. I want to share some pictures. Yeah. But um, the whole the whole time, uh, my dad. One day, they said you had a visitor after I was in there for two months, and my dad had come there from Florida. Somebody had contacted him that I used to work with and said your son's in jail and he's very sick and he's so. He called me and I went out there and my dad was standing there. And he said, I love you, son. I said, I love you, Dad. So I got my mother's phone number and all the information at that oh, time. Called. Wow. So God's good. But God has fast forwarding. I was going to say, let's fast forward yeah, a little bit. Yeah, let's fast forward to, to these pictures. Yeah. Um, can I look at the because, screen yeah, to see you've the been pictures? Going to Haiti. I need to talk. <laughs> you got saved. You went to Haiti. I did. Several I went to Haiti in 2010. I did. In 2010, I set up a tent for uh, a church on the rock there, Delmas 31. And this is our Christmas picture two years ago. These are uh, almost all of the children there. And a lady uh, gives us all these, I call them tchotchkes. But this is, we've got special needs uh, in the picture there. And we, every year we do a Christmas picture. You can go ahead and go to the next. That's all of our girls. A uh, doctor in Lakeland bought them all brand new dresses. Aww. That's the last time I was down. That's me preaching the gospel. You know, I preach to the children just like I do to the adults. Because children are just little adults. That's one of the churches, the Church of God, that I've ministered in down there. Uh, it's a pretty large church. Uh, this is my, my group there, my mini apostles, I call them, that go out with me to minister. And I've taught these kids. I don't know, many of you have been to, to other countries, but the dogs aren't always the highest on the food chain right. because yeah. there's, there, there's no food for them. And I've taught these boys to love animals and Aww. feed them and take care of them. That's Garrison. Can we stop it there for just a second? Um, this was the testimony I was telling you about. Um, Garrison was 18 months old in a camp in City Soleil when I saw him covered in sores, sick, and I, I learned a very about valuable lesson about God that day because I walked in there and he was there and I'm not supposed to take children that young into the home. But I had to take this child. So I asked God, what do I do in these situations where I'm... He said, sometimes you just have to do things by faith mm. and leave wow. the consequences to me. And the consequences of God are always going to be good. Amen. And that boy is a testimony of wow. the goodness of God. And I picked him up. I paced the floors for a long time with him sick. Uh, he was very, very sick. Sores all over him, but we finally, the Lord finally just healed him, and he's thriving now. Praise God. Praise and he's going God. to school, and he loves his daddy. And, uh, and how old is he now? He's 10. 10? 10. 10 years old, yes ma'am. Now where do you keep all these? <laughs> we have, a, we have a, a pretty um, large place <clears throat> that we've grew down there. God's grown. Um, we have a, a, a boy's home, which we started, and the area where we were, the land around there just started opening up. So I've been purchasing properties oh. as the Lord leads and as he provides. And um, we're going to show one of the properties we're hoping to do a school on later. Yeah. But I want to show you our gate. I the, think we've I got just, the gate on yeah. here with the shofar. But we before did. we do that, I went, I have to, this is really funny. I went outside one morning and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, go blow the shofar. And I'm down there kind of in another world, well, literally another world. And I, I didn't even dawn on me it was Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> so I put this on Facebook and um, everybody was like going crazy because it was Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> and I said, thanks for letting me know. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Can we go ahead and play that? And I'll, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. 
Judah gate. They've actually, they've actually chiseled that lion out with a hammer and a chisel. You're good. We're doing a singing video. Yes, we'll do that. Chris, you can play <laughs> Maybe that Maybe sometime I'll bring it here and blow it. Yes. <laughs> but it was amazing, and God, God just really is, is victorious. That, that gate that you saw there, he gave me the vision. The top of it's the crown and the Lion of Judah. Yeah. Because the Lion of Judah breaks every chain. I think we have a video also of the girls singing, and one of the um, special needs girls is also singing with them if they want to play that video. So. <laughs> The lady there in the yellow dress, she, um, she teaches the girls, and she's head of our special needs, yeah. and she's special need herself. Oh, really? She had polio. She's, she has walks with a, a limp. And, uh, aren't they beautiful? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, pray for me. I have five teenage girls right now and 20 teenage boys. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, you just said five teenage girls and, and 20, 20 No, teen 15 teenage boys. I've got 20 okay. teenagers right now. Oh, my. So I'm hoping that this gray streak in my hair doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll pray for you. I just, you know, I've learned with, with teenagers that you, you let the Holy Spirit lead you which battles you need to fight and which you just need to walk away. Yeah. Sometimes you can win with teenagers by just walking away. Yeah. Now... You have 20 teenagers. Mm -hmm. How different are they than our teenagers here? Well, um, unfortunately, in the world right now, there's a lot of rebellion. And there's a lot of uh, the devil, I really believe, has loosed a lot of stuff into the atmosphere. So many of the things that I deal with with them, the, you know, you go through the same thing here with the teenagers, except that there's not a whole lot of drugs down there in Haiti. Mm -hmm. But there's other things. There's the spiritual stuff that we yeah. have to fight. There's spiritual battles I've gone through with some of these children for years, and I've had to grab hold of them sometimes, bear hug them, and just, and just rebuke those spirits out of them. Mm -hmm. I've had them call me. Uh, uh, one of the children woke up one time <coughs> calling me like, like it was from the old days of... Uh, slavery and things and I had to rebuke those spirits off that child but wow. you know when we rebuke the devil he flees in Jesus name amen That's right. amen so now do you learn the language down there my pali pizzi creole huh. um, I, I'm learning to speak a lot more than I used to I understand a lot my um, compran creole means I understand creole and sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's a bad thing because yeah. <laughs> you can hear what they're all saying and understand But you're it. teaching them English. But most of the, all of the boys speak English and the, the girls are learning English. I pay an English teacher to come when I'm not there to teach them. That's great. They're, they're learning. Yeah. They're learning. It's, it's, it's a joy. You know, tears yeah. sometimes, but mostly joy. Yeah. yeah. Now, you said you have a good place for them for school. Yes, we're going to share a little bit later in the program about yeah. the school. And um, I actually, we've, we've drawn up the plans for the school, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the program, I think. But we're, where do they go now? Oh, I, we have to pay for them to go to private school. And um, it's, it's pretty expensive down there. It's about $16,000 a year wow. for the school, plus the uniforms and things. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about this school awesome. and some miracles. Yes.
Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Victory. 
Very good. Very good. Yeah, we appreciate good music. Oh, like man. Yeah. Now, how yeah. did you jump from the U.S. to Haiti? Well, it's kind of a, not, it's a long story that we'll make short. Um, but I was talking, uh, John 3, 8, you know, it talks about the wind. We don't know where it starts yeah. and we don't know where it ends. And so is it when the spirit of God takes hold of a man. Well, the spirit of God took hold of me. And um, after the earthquake, I started going down to Haiti and setting tents up. And because of the churches that had been had broken down and the different schools and things. Because your the Lord, father did this. Yes, and the Lord just kept taking me back there, paying my way back. Literally, I was laying a foundation in the nation, taking me back. I was even paid to work down there uh, from a group, a company. And some of the work, a lot of the work was volunteer, but I was even making money going down there. Well, two years after, after doing this work, almost two years, uh, I was, it was ending. And I was like, God, I know you've called me to this nation because he had called me previously in a night when I was under a tent down there. So one night I laid down and he gave me a vision. And in this vision, I was sitting in a boat in the bottom of a pond and I was painting a picture. And I had a big old brush. I was painting birds in the sky, a house, a dock, children <coughs> fishing on the dock, all of these wonderful things in this picture. And um, I said, God, what does this mean? I knew it was a dream or a vision or whatever you want. He was trying to tell me something. And he just said, keep painting your picture. So I kept painting it, the sun, the clouds. And when I thought I had been working on this painting and it was a masterpiece, which is a miracle because I don't paint, <laughs> <laughs> I looked out of that little boat and a spring started bubbling up in that empty pond. And before I knew it, the water was just gushing out of that spring, filling up the pond. And as the water filled up the pond and started lifting me up in the boat, everything in that picture started coming to life. The birds started flying, the fish were yeah. swimming in the pond, the children were catching the fish, all of these things came to life. And God spoke to me and he said, David, you paint your picture and my living water will bring it to life for you. Mm, and I amazing. woke up and I said, I'm gonna open up a home for children. And at first I thought I would bring uh, all street children in, which a lot of them came off the street, but they're really rough down there. You really have to have, uh, it's, it has you know, a special place. But we've taken some off the street, but I, I, I came back here to the US and a group up in New York called me, a friend of mine who, who God rest his soul, he passed away a couple years ago. He was such a dear father to me. I went up there and they wrote the check for to put the bathrooms in a home down there that I leased to start a children's home. And December 31st, 2012, I went in a rented truck with a social worker out. I had already paid a, paid a fee to start the home, went out, and picked up the first three boys for the home. Really? Now, out of 780 homes down there, almost 800 homes, there's only 30 as of two years ago that had the licenses. And within eight months, the Lord had made a way for us to get our license for the home. And we're working on our fourth license right now. Wow. wow. And 65 children later. Now you, oh my God. You've got how many houses? We, we first bought the boys home and then God opened up the property in the back. I was looking out the window and uh, the, God said, you know, you need girls too. To, you need to raise girls too. And uh, girls are people too. Yes. <laughs> he said, you need to raise girls too, not just the boys. So um, I walked back there and come to find out the people that own that house were visiting. They live in the U.S. So I'm leasing the home, hoping to buy it. We have a building fund for that home. And then the land beside the boys' home on the other side of the Lion Gate opened up. And then another piece of property by the girls. So we almost have all the properties around that little road right now. Now we're praying for one property that's in the middle of the boys' home and the girls' home. 
And, uh, you know, the devil always tries to throw wrenches in things, oh, yeah. but God has the final say. That's yeah. right. So, God, I believe he's going to work that property out, and we're going to have every property around that road. Yes, amen. And um, so the last, the very back piece of property, uh, the Holy Spirit's impressed me to build a school. And um, I, I'm not going to share the whole dream before the school, but I was sitting in... in uh, quarantine last time I was here I, we had to quarantine in a hotel over in Lakeland and God came to me in another dream and he basically told me the end of this I can't share the whole thing he said David you have painted your picture with heavenly paint and your faith and he said the place of plenty will provide everything you need mm. to finish Wow so what have I done? I went back to Haiti and I have these plans that we have drawn up for this school. It's a 16 room school and I have to share something real quick before we do that because this is amazing. The last time I was on this show, I have someone out in, uh, in, uh, up in Alabama. There's a up there. Yeah, oh, up please. in Alabama. I have to share this with y'all. This is so amazing. Well, we know what you're going to say and we can't wait for you to share it. So okay. go ahead. Anyway, uh, a big man, a Marine, an ex-Marine, he called me in Haiti, and uh, he had actually watched the show. The Holy Spirit had woke him up at 3 o'clock in the morning to the watch the show. The last time you were on The Good Life. Yes. The Good Life was playing. The only three interviews I've ever done on TV is here at CTN, two with Miss Darlene, and one with you guys, and it was on. And the Holy Spirit woke him up to watch it. And he said, that testimony was so blessed me. He said, the Holy Spirit, God spoke to me and said, I want you to give to that ministry. And he said, I'm going to open up a door for you to give. Well, he had been waiting on some money. And the money came through and he gave us the first $10,000 offering Praise towards God. the school. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Now, $10,000 will go a long way. It will as well as one-fifteenth of what we need. But that's a big chunk. And it's because you're obedient, because I came over to the show, and he saw it. See, the Holy Spirit, he, you know, Jesus made a way for far and near, and we all share the same Spirit. Amen. That's right. So when I'm walking in the Spirit, and others are walking in the Spirit. He can speak to other people to pray for you, to help you. And that just offerings. goes to show that God is in this. Yes, God He is. is. It's just so amazing. It blew me away. And I showed you the picture of the man. He's a big guy. But the Holy Spirit don't care how big you are, how small you are. He That's speaks true. to us all. Amen. And yes, this is does. the school, if we can put those pictures up. This is the, the, the dream I have of the school. It's a 16-room school, um, 18 by 18 uh, foot rooms. And the columns in the front will pull it all together and make it strong in case there's an earthquake. And um, that's an overview. But that's, what I, that's the vision God gave me for the school. And he said, paint your picture and he will bring it to life. His living water will Amen. bring it to life for you. And you know, there may be somebody out there today that's kind of stuck. And you know, I just, I, when I share, can I share this word? Sure. sure. When I give that story, I always have to tell people that his living water is not just for my picture. His living water is for your picture and your picture yes. and your picture. His living water is for us all. Amen. And he wants to bring your situation to life, Amen. your healing into reality. He's a good God. Amen. Yes, he is. He's a good and you God. know, when you obey God and you give, you can't be giving. When you, you give, it's being given back to you. And when you ministry, when you keep your mind on God's prize, which is souls. That's right. Souls. That's right. And ministering to his children, whether they be big children or little children in Haiti or little children in Africa. Wherever your ministry is, when you minister his gospel, he provides. Amen. Yes, he does. Ooh, I got goosebumps. And it's just so obvious. <laughs> <Brother Bob>. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a tractor trailer on your Facebook page 
and all of these bicycles. And you know, my heart just leaped for joy because I thought the excitement on the faces of those children that yes. see those bicycles. And I, I went and picked those bicycles up through an organization in Dade City that, that my aunt operates and all of those bicycles were donated by the, the Zephyr Hill Sheriff Department and the Dade City Police Department. Yay. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Hooray, Good hooray thing. for the Our police. wonderful policemen. <laughs> yes. They gave us 49 bicycles. Wow. And they're on their way to Haiti. The rest of them go Friday. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, ma'am. And people just God's really give. Good. Well, what if there's somebody out there right now and they want to be a part of this? And Because you, I want to tell you something. Recently, I heard one of the Lord's, high, I'll call them high-level prophets, that talked about right now, God's eye is on His children. Mm -hmm. His eye is right. on children. Right. And God is really going to bless those that that want to help children, that do for children. Yes, ma'am. And I'm just, I really, Bob and I prayed that God would move upon the hearts of uh -huh. people that have the ability to do it. Well, that, you know, people can always, we, we gather things up a couple times a year, but we can also, a lot of people don't want to go out and buy things and, and take care of, you know, go and shop and all that. Um, they can visit blackandwhiteforjesusministries.org or they can go to blackandwhiteforjesus.com It'll all take you to the same place. And there's a place there you can give. Um, should I give our mailing address? Yeah. Sure. Our mailing address is 6632 Lemon Tree Drive, Lakeland, Florida, 33813. Say it another time. Somebody may be getting a pen okay. right now. And <laughs> Get say, your it pen. say it slow. Say it slow. 6632 Lemon Tree Drive, Lakeland, Florida, 33813. Mm. And um, if you can't remember Black and White for Jesus Ministries, you can put David Wine on there and we'll put it right into that account. Yeah. Um, but God, we have a board. We have a nonprofit. So we've got everything is, I've got a board that keeps me accountable and keeps my faith in the right track. And I've got a wonderful board, too. I want to throw a word out there because they get on the, I call it the crazy train faith. <laughs> Good sometimes, for them. sometimes I propose things to them that are a little crazy in the natural, but God always comes through. Amen. He always yes. comes through. And, and the school was probably a little crazy for them. Well, the school, yes, sir. But, you know, they now that uh, we've gotten 30,000 of the 150 that we need, and there uh, are some things in the works with that right now. So we're praying mm -hmm. that all of that works out. You know, God often works the things in the works out. That's Amen. right. And, uh, He's is, really is good at cheaper? doing that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> is it cheaper to build in Haiti? Um, not really. Um, it's, uh, it's about the same. The problem in Haiti is, is the property. You have to really make sure your property is free and clear before you build on it. Because you don't want anybody to come back and say <clears throat> it was ours beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the school property is cleared completely, and so is our boys' home property. So Praise that is wonderful. God's good. Praise God. Well, David, we know that there are people watching out there that may not know Jesus. Yes. Would you give them an opportunity to receive Jesus? I certainly Jesus? would. Tell them how good He is. You know. <laughs> God is so good. He's, he's, as the old preacher man said, he's gooder than good. <laughs> and what he's done for me, he will do for you. And what he's done for you all, he'll do for anyone. Yeah. He's no respecter of persons. So if you're, if the Holy Spirit's woken you up this morning, awaked you in the morning hours and you're watching this, God has hope for you. He spared no expense. His son went to the cross. Amen. He died on that cross, but you know, he didn't stay on the cross. He went into that tomb, but he rose again. That's right. And the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you right now, wherever you are. You know, I often pray for people. There's a lot of people right now that are addicted to prescription drugs and, and alcohol and things of that nature. And if God can set me free, I was a 23-year-old, 23-year addict, and um, He set me free like that, and then I received it over a few months. And He healed your body. And He healed my body of hepatitis C. I've been through two treatments of Hep C for Hep C, two. But 12 years now, I'm walking 
in his goodness. Amen. And his goodness is healing. Amen. And the fruit, you know, the fruit of the Spirit for us, the first one is love and then joy and then peace. We can't have peace when we're in pain. We can't have peace when we're in turmoil. Amen. And God wants to deliver those, I believe, today who are in turmoil, Amen. who are full of anxiety, full of fear, maybe full of addiction. God wants to deliver you. Amen. 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 And all you have to do is come to Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. And say, forgive me yes. of my sin. Hallelujah. And make me hallelujah. over anew. Yes, hallelujah. And he'll hallelujah. do for you what he did for David. Yes. He'll make you over anew. Yes. God hallelujah. richly bless you. Hallelujah. And after the break, more music by Ken Hope. There are so many different ways to watch the CTN family of networks. We're available on television almost anywhere. DirecTV, Dish Network, Glory Star. We even have a CTN Roku channel. If you live near any of these cities, you can watch us with an indoor-outdoor antenna or through your local cable company. Best of all, you can watch CTN anywhere at any time by going to the internet. We're streaming online. Watch your desktop, laptop, tablet, iPad, your phone, or even your watch. Most of our shows are also available on demand. Watch what you want, when you want at ctnonline.com. CTN's family of networks. Take us with you and watch wherever you go. Heavenly Father, may we never forget those viewers that you have entrusted to our care. We now hold them before your throne and pray for each soul to be right with you. Oh God, bring love and harmony to their families. And we also pray for divine healing for those who are sick. We bring these petitions in the name of Jesus. Amen. carried a burden for too long on my own and I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go and I see I'm laying it down and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again. And again, oh, 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 you saw my condition, and you had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption. The price for my heart I don't have a context 
for that kind of love I don't understand and I can't comprehend all I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart needs a surgeon my soul needs a friend so I Again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 oh. My heart has been in your sights long. Before my first breath, running into your arms is running to life from death. And I feel this rush deep in my chest. Your mercy is calling out. And just talking to David Wine and I know that voodoo is big there but how do you come against it how do you take these kids out of that voodoo well many of them have been in voodoo for I mean eight or ten generations and when you come into a, a house like ours, because I, this God's house, God is the creator of that place. Um, you know, the, the devil is going to try to fight us. And um, I've studied a lot of the, about the voodoo and the hierarchy voodoo literally in their ceremonies and things, they sell the souls of the children of the, of the next generation. They'll, they sell those souls. Um, for their power they believe that so really prayer to me is just taking back you know what the devil thinks he has stolen so I believe you know I'm a 139 Psalms guy I believe that God creates knits every baby in the womb yes. right now he's knitting every baby in the womb around the whole world and I believe he knitted those children together in the womb and I believe as their father, God has put me in a fatherhood figure there, that I have the power through the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony Amen. to to take back, to ask God to open their books of destiny, that their destiny does not have to be poverty, that their destiny does not have to be lack, 
but their destiny can be prosperity in their lives. Not, I'm not talking about just monetary prosperity. I'm talking about mental prosperity, physical prosperity, and that those curses that have been passed down through their family line, I believe, are broken Amen. through prayer and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because he took those on the cross for us. You know, there's a lot of people watching right now that are under the spell of a, a devil or some witchcraft person. You don't have to stay under that. Amen. Right. You can rebuke it. Hallelujah. In the name of in the name Jesus. Of Jesus. And right. be set free. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to Hallelujah. be under their spell. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I know that I was talking to somebody today that's under a spell, but you don't have to be. Amen. You can just cry out to Jesus. Yes. Say, deliver right. me from this scourge. Set me free. Yes. Yeah. Jesus, do what you do. Yes, Lord. In my life. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And he does it all. That's right. He does it all. There's power. There's actually power in crying out loud. There is. Yeah. You know, as, as parents, if our children... We were tired. We came in and sat down in a chair, and our children were in another room, and they just said, hey, Mom, come here. You're tired. Just a minute, honey. I'll be there in a little bit. But if they scream our name out, yes. we're not going to sit in that chair and Amen. say, I'll be there in two minutes. That's a good word. We're going to run to them, yes. and we're going to help them. Yes. You know, the Bible says if your children ask you for a piece of bread, are you going to give them a stone? Amen. And I love the truth that is, scripture. no, God, your Father loves you. And for those of you that just prayed that prayer a little while ago, you asked Jesus to forgive your sin. You're talking to Jesus. Come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior. Well, you're now a child of God. And you can cry out to Him just like those of us that have been Christians for many, many years because He loves you and has a plan for you. Amen. So we just want you to know, are you going through something right now? Cry out loud. Don't be ashamed. Yes. Don't let pride keep you from crying out loud. Cry out loud and watch God move. I Amen. know, I can know, I could just name two or three testimonies right now. These were years ago of people that cried out loud, and that very day or hour, God came on the scene. He will. He loves you. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. That's right. He is a total life. Yes, he is. God bless you. Hallelujah. And Ken's going to um, come back and sing. <laughs> he's going to come back and sing, but he, he's going to close out the program today. Yes. God the bless God you. who stays. I would have given up on me by now I would have labeled me a lost cause Cause I feel just like a lost cause If I were you I would have turned around and walked away I would have labeled me beyond repair Cause I feel just like I'm beyond repair But somehow you don't see me like I do Somehow you're still here You're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction While the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever let you down I always thought I had to earn my way but I'm learning you don't work that way somehow you don't see me like I do somehow you're still here you're the God
Separate my heart from the God. 